Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a really long time that there has been no video on this channel. I think the last video was uh, the New Year's vlog. Uh, got too much busy with uh, personal life, a festival and then the university uh, here and there. Uh, but yes, uh, this video uh, is for the students that who are coming to Koblenz uh, and uh, you know planning their uh, masters here. The whole video will be divided into three different parts. The first part being how is the course, is the course doable, what to expect from the course in general. The second part being how and what are uh, the job opportunities in Koblenz. And the third part being what are the actual expenses uh, for a general uh, common master students coming here and studying. So yeah, that's the plan for the video. My name is Abhishek, just in case if you forgot, let's get started. Starting with uh, the course, uh, in, in, in a very general aspect, I would say the course is a very doable course. This course doesn't really fall into very beginner level of course or like a very expert level of course. This course usually falls in intermediate level where you can expect yourself to put enough efforts. Uh, it's not like you don't put effort and you would still be passing. Uh, this course expects you to put a good amount of efforts and then learn and then apply it into your examinations and then clear your examinations. But it's nothing like, you know, you really can't clear it. So basically, if you're an international student, you usually generally hear uh, that people saying that German education level is kind of, uh, you know, uh, it's it's a really hard for, for a initial moments. But it's nothing like that. It's a very doable course. I would say that. So uh, the next question being what to expect from the course. The course is basically divided into four different parts. The first part being uh, all the mandatory subjects and the second part being the, all the elective subjects. The third part is your research and the seminar and the fourth part being the thesis. Uh, for the first part, there are uh, six mandatory subjects that you are supposed to be doing. Uh, the first one being web science second one being big data, third one being data science, fourth one being machine learning, fifth one being uh, NTDS also called as network theory and dynamic systems and the sixth one being EYDS which is engineering web and data intensive systems. So these are the combinations uh, where you can uh, take uh, based on four plus two, four subjects will be offered during the winter and two will be offered during the summer. Uh, the, two sum two th the two subjects which are gonna be offered in the summer are usually network theory and big data and uh, the rest of the four are usually offered in winter semester along with all those mandatories you are also allowed to take or like i would recommend you to take the elective subjects as well so you can definitely take six or more than six elective subjects um, and some of the elective subjects would be uh, mining software repositories web information retrieval or something interesting like entrepreneurship enterprise architecture and a couple of other things such as ai as well so at this particular time with all of this collective uh, like uh, choosable electives you can you know modify your course or redirect your course towards a particular journey where also you can add some uh, business uh, related electives and kind of add management uh, kind of a touch towards your course as well so I would say this is a kind of um, an overall uh, idea of uh, the course that you can expect and then comes the research lab. A research lab is usually offered uh, from the professors just in case let's say I would give you an example a data science professor is offering you a research then uh, you are allowed to do a research under the data science professor or sometimes it might be uh, something else maybe an AI professor maybe a machine learning professor so it also depends upon the availability of the professor and the research at that particular moment and then comes the thesis um, I would not be able to give you a good idea on thesis because I'm not there yet but yes uh, there are a uh, few of my seniors who have who have completed um, thesis and that took them around uh, six to eight or like I would say nine months in order to um, finish their thesis with a really good uh, grades that, uh, that's like an average or like a very general idea that I could give you but please don't consider me uh, or my perspective or like my opinion when it comes to the thesis part because I don't really consider myself there yet but in a very broad way or in a very general way to speak about this course would be this course will definitely enable you uh, to start your journey uh, towards your data science career after your studies or during your studies as a working student as well. Okay, speaking about the second part of the video uh, about the jobs, uh, I would say job can be divided into two parts. One is the technical jobs and the one and the being the tech non-technical jobs. Uh, speaking about non-technical jobs, um, I would say there are good amount of opportunities just in case if you're coming uh, as an international student without an experience here. Uh, there are uh, there are opportunities such as uh, working at uh, working at Magdi's, working at uh, Domino's, working at Liferando as a delivery partner, uh, working at Amazon uh, for uh, you know picking packing uh, services here and there. 
uh, or maybe you can also consider Deutsche Post for uh, sorting of the letters and here and there. Uh, but yes, there are opportunities uh, for international students uh, in the non-technical part as well. But uh, please expect that when you are in the non-technical part, you should be uh, available at the job campus or the job premises. Uh, there are nothing as uh, that you can work from home when you're considering uh, non-technical jobs. But also speaking about technical jobs, there, uh, there are a few of my friends who has a technical uh, role here and work as a work student here in Koblenz, but not a lot of them. Most of them, I would say, uh, most of them are from Cologne Bond region, uh, getting a job from there or from Berlin side of the things. But yes, uh, but also remember when you are entitled to a technical job, you're also allowed to work from home, which is, which is what even I am doing. So yeah, that is the pro uh, thing or like that is a soft corner side that you get where you can work from home uh, as a technical part and also still be, a, you know, still be able to attend universities and the tutorials uh, from at the university directly in person. Uh, but in order to give you a very general idea regarding the job interviews, I would say yes, there are enough job opportunities available for non-technical and technical side of the things. Uh, but again, if you compare it to a very big, con uh, very big places such as Frankfurt, Cologne or, uh, you know, Berlin, it, there's comparatively, yes, obviously it's going to be a very, a very small uh, amount of jobs available because those are very big cities. But it's again, it's not like there are nothing available here. There is good amount of opportunities available, which help can, which, which can definitely help you to get started into the German career. All right. So speaking about uh, the final part of the video that is being uh, like managing expenses or like the average uh, expense about uh, for an international student here in Koblenz. Um, and I really hate the part where students usually say that, okay, 300 is my uh, monthly rent. And uh, after that, I have my health insurance. And after that, I have 150 euros of groceries. That's not going to happen, I would say. That's definitely not going to happen. I'll tell you why. Uh, renting have gone up. Food, food bills have gone up. Electricity have gone up. Heating has gone up. Considering also all the inflation rates, that's definitely not going to happen. And it's, it is a very, um, un, uh, how do I say, illogical way of saying that you would be having all the 31 days uh, cooking food and having your lunch, breakfast, dinner, whatever it is in home. That's not going to happen. So the average amount that I feel that you need here as an international student for the first year when you come, when you, when you have to spend very less initially because you don't have a job, you, you are only surviving by a blocked account and that would range up to 650 to 750 euros. Also considering that you couple of uh, you eat couple of meals outside, you also order some of the some products from Amazon or go maybe have a couple of drinks outside, and this is the range that I would say that is 650 to 750 euros. But after that, once you start earning job, you need to start saving, you need to start investing, and you need to start sending money to your parents as well. So that part again comes in a very different area. So that is another part of the story that we would say. All right, so that's all for this video, guys. I I know this is kind of a very informative way. I'm not throwing around anything, but this was this video was very important to all the students that are coming, uh, you know, from international uh, and planning your studies here. Uh, and I hope this video would be really helpful to you guys. And uh, yeah, just in case if it helped you, uh, drop a like and uh, yeah, subscribe for more and more videos. Uh, please don't fo forget to uh, follow on Instagram. Bye bye.